Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry for help, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the 32nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity so that unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Wisdom is bright and does not grow dim. By those who love her, she is readily seen and found by those who look for her. Quick to anticipate those who desire her, she makes herself known to them. Watch for her early and you will have no trouble you will find her sitting at your gates. Even to think about her is understanding fully grown. Be on the alert for her and anxiety will quickly leave you. She herself walks about looking for those who are worthy of her and graciously shows herself to them as they go in every thought of theirs coming to meet them. The word of the Lord. For you my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long, for you my soul is thirsting, my body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. For you my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life, my lips will speak your praise. For you my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. 
So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. For you my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. On my bed I remember you, on you I muse through the night, for you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. For you my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, stay awake and stand ready, because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here, go out and meet him. At this, all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. So stay awake because you do not know either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Kings of old often had jesters to entertain them and their courtiers, especially after banquets. One day, the jester said something so foolish that the king handed him his staff and said, Take this and keep it till you find a bigger fool than yourself. Years later, the king was on his deathbed. His family, his servants, and his courtiers were all standing nearby. The king, addressing them, said, I am about to leave on a long journey and will not return. So I have called you all here to say goodbye for the last time. Then his jesters stepped forward and addressing the king said, Your Majesty, when you journeyed abroad visiting our people, your servants always went before you making preparations. May I ask, what preparations have your majesty made for this journey? Alas, replied the king, I have made none. Then the jester said, take this staff, for now I have found a bigger fool than myself. 
At the time of Jesus, weddings took place in the evening, and after the wedding was over, the groom would go to his in-laws to haggle long and hard the dowry, and he could be there well after midnight. When he emerged from the house, the bridegrooms had to be ready with lighted torches to escort him to his house, where his bride was waiting for him. Now Jesus used this familiar scene to teach us an important lesson. We know that November is the month of the holy souls, but we shouldn't neglect praying for our own soul that we will be ready for the master when our time is up. Looking round now at the countryside and when their leaves are gone, the trees look skeleton-like now against the sky, don't they? The end of the year is in sight. So too, the church wants us to focus our minds on the last things, one of which is death itself. Now in a world of uncertainties, and we've seen that with the coronavirus, in a world of uncertainties, the one thing that is certain is death. We may not know the day or the hour, but it's an appointment we cannot cancel. In not preparing for it, we replicate those foolish bridesmaids. A foolish person, you know, in the Bible is not one who is intellectually challenged, but one who lives their life in this world without any thought for the next. The psalmist, for instance, in one of the psalms, I think it's Psalm 14, it says, the fool says in his heart there is no God above. As faithful Christians, we should be looking forward to meeting our Saviour. When St. Teresa lay dying, she said to the nuns gathered round her bed, I can hear the rustle in the distance of my heavenly bridegroom. If we are going to be ready for his arrival, the lamp we need to keep lit is our faith in Christ. At every baptism, for instance, after the parents receive the lighted candle, we say to them, may your baby keep the flame of faith alive in his or her heart. And when the Lord comes again at the end of time, may he or she go out to meet him with lamps alit, with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. The light of faith can go out if it's not nourished by the oil of prayer and good works. The foolish bridesmaids, as we just heard, were locked out of the banquet. The Lord did not know them. In this life, his door is always open to us. He is always ready to listen to heartfelt prayer so that we can draw closer to him in this life. So when we meet him after this short life is over, he will be no stranger to us. Trusting in God's love and mercy, we bring the needs of the church, the world, and our own needs to him in prayer. 
Since this is Remembrance Sunday, we remember all who gave their lives defending their country in two world wars, and indeed lesser wars. May the memory of their sacrifice and of the grief of their friends and families prompt us all to pursue peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the United Nations that it may be an effective instrument of peace in the world. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all leaders of nations that they may be given knowledge, wisdom and understanding in pursuit of the good of all their peoples so that they may live in peace within their frontiers and with other nations. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peoples displaced by war or persecution or poverty that they may be given courage and find a welcome. Lord, in your mercy. During this month of November, we pray especially for our deceased relatives and friends, and indeed all the deceased of the parish. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. We ask Our Lady to support our prayers as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. In silence we make our own requests to our Heavenly Father. God, our loving Father, we ask you to hear and answer all our prayers because we make them in faith through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life <clears throat> by the mystery of this water and wine may we come to share the divinity of christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. <clears throat> Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honour it with loving devotion, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. <coughs> Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me.
Let us pray. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your Spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.